All right, welcome to Doozer Shop. Um, I got an update for you. Uh, I've been cleaning a lot of stuff um, and getting my machines ready. Uh, yeah, let me just take a handheld. I'll show you what I've been working on and uh, cleaning up. So uh, here we go. wrist band on here all right proper okay um the rockford planer um i've got the column up i've cleaned the ways and uh i moved the column up and i what i did is there's three gibbs and i took the gibbs out and cleaned everything you might be able to see here, um, this is a tapered gib, and two nuts adjusted up and down, and there's a Gitz flip top oil cup on top of it, you know, that you put oil in. That's kind of a neat feature. I've never seen a machine that had the oil cups on the gibs. Um, I mean, it's got one. Got one here on the, the vertical slideway. But that's cool, so I took that out, cleaned it, and uh, put it back in. Let me take care on the front. Um, and uh, zippity doo da. Boom. Okay. So here we are at the front, and as you can see, I got my cleaning supplies. The cross rail was basically down on the table uh, for transport. So I got the cross rail put back up and I cleaned the ways on it before I moved it again. Um, I don't know if you can see, maybe you can't. No, the gib is down uh, inside. There you can maybe see it. You can see I painted the oil cup white and it's got an Allen head screw for an adjuster. Um, these oil cups were grease fittings and I changed them uh, to what you see there. But like I said, there's the cables for the counterbalances, there's the uh, tapered gib with the oil cup. Um, there, you can see that. Alright, so that's cool. Um, and Man, this thing was black and dirty. So, there's that side. Notice all the flip top oilers for the shafts and whatnot. Um, you see all the grease in the lead screw. This thing was very well preserved. Um, but I didn't get to clean that yet. But this side, you can see I'm down to the original gray paint. So, you know, all this uh, it looks like rust. It's very fine surface rust. It's just so fine. I'm going to scrape it off with a razor blade. But I, I, I took uh, a blue rags and I put on blue paper towels behind the the sc lead screw in the shaft and I've been using you know lacquer thinner on a brush and just uh, basically you know lacquer thinner and just clean 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 and then the blue rag was behind it and I just take the Take the, take the blue paper towels that are just covered in grease and, uh, uh, you know, lacquer thinner and just take them outside in the stone driveway and burn them, you know, uh, basically incinerate them to nothing. So, uh, that's cool. I've been cleaning. I got the light on down here as well. So, there's the cross rail, the side planing head, and... Uh, it runs on the same ways and the same screw. So the crank turns the Acme nut to elevate and lower the cross head. And the actual rail, uh, it, you know, the, the top round thing is a gearbox and it's actuated by the, where is that, the crank on the side. So this took a lot to clean and basically I had a little uh, soup cup a tin can full of uh, lacquer thinner and I put it you know underneath the lead screw and I just kept washing that lead screw with lacquer thinner and a brush and the same with the ways and I just you know wiped out the the, uh, the interior there 
So that's all clean. And uh, maybe you can't see where that plumbing goes in and out. That area was where the column affixes to the base. It attaches to the base. So uh, that was pretty cruddy. Um, and I know you can't see it. And, uh, and, and that, that was all cleaned. Uh, with, I packed rags on the bottom and cleaned it with lacquer thinner and, and a brush. Um, so, so that worked out well. Uh, that piece of hex stock is just a stop bar to keep it from going down uh, any longer. So this mechanism with the hand crank that I, I replaced the crank um, in another video, this controls the, uh, the step over of the tool and it's pretty cool. You might not be able to see it. This, this is a needle valve that advances it. It says uh, uh, crane uh, on the valve. So Crane, you know, makes plumbing parts many, many years ago. So it's a needle valve made by Crane. I don't know if it's the same John Crane that made packing for cylinders and water pumps, but perhaps, I don't know. Maybe you can leave a comment if Crane Plumbing is the same. I know Kohler Engines and Kohler Faucets are the same company. Maybe you did, didn't know that, don't know. Kind of neat. So let me back you up. Um, let's go over to the lathe. Oh, here you go. Rust oleum smoke gray. The whole shop smells like rust oleum, and I'll show you why. Um, because I have been cleaning and painting. The uh, the tailstock is off. And I have painted, all right, let me back up. I have cleaned the interior between the bedways on the 17 inch Colchester lathe. Man, it took me like three, four days, maybe more to clean all this. And I used the needle scaler. You can see the, the fresh new gray paint. And almost down to bare metal, I had hints of the factory um, applied primer. It was like kind of yellowish, green. I don't know if it would be considered a chromate primer. Um, but then I used the needle scaler, the pneumatic needle scaler, on all this. Um, I left, the, you know, the factory, there's some filler in factory, like I said, primer. But it's a round well down between the ways. Um, I'll show you the outside. You know, it's, it's the foot of the lathe. You know, it's it's the the tailstock end. So there's that one, and uh, you know, the 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 lamp's probably blowing it out. But there's the middle one, and uh, you see, yeah, this end one lights up pretty well. And then there's this one. Okay, man, it's like looking at the underground caverns. It's stalactites, stalagmites. I mean, it's a little bit rough surface. Um, Kind of like the handy tool and gauge maker. That thing was outside for many years and rusted like the Titanic. And I brought it back. And uh, so this was actually rust rust. And uh, de-rusted it with phosphoric acid. And, you know, you can kind of see in the glare. It's uh, a little bit rough. But it's okay because... That's that same rust oleum smoke gray directly to the, the, the metal, to the steel, to the iron. And no primer, but boy, it really sticks well. I think sometimes, not all the time, primers are sold. Um, so the companies that make paint sell more paint. I don't know. I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but... Uh, and so... The chuck goes here, this is the, it's like a natural gap, a natural space, you know, and the gap bolts in here, and I got the gap. That's the gap on my cart, you know, waiting to be cleaned up and reinstalled. So I, I got this chipped out and painted, and inside here is kind of a hollow space. This was all nasty, and it still had casting sand in the corners, and I had to, you know, needle scaler it out. But it's all clean and happy and nice. And uh, 
The, it took me a long time to clean this and paint it. So much so that, maybe I can catch this. Um, under here, where the, the clamp for the tailstock rides, I had to paint all that and I used a mirror. Actually, let me take my wrist strap off and show you guys. Well, yeah. All them crevices, that's all painted up underneath there. I tried to do a good job, you know. Um, and I, this is the only one that's lit up. I don't know if you can see. Let me go. Okay. Yep. So all those areas, I uh, I had to get that gray paint under there. I think I did a, a, a jam up job of painting in, in, you know, it's not one hollow, it's segmented as you can see. But that was the project at hand, is to clean this lathe inside and paint it. Um, so, yeah. So, that's kind of what I've been doing with my time on the weekends. Um, that's, that's the handy. Yeah. So that's, that's what I've been doing. I know it's not glorious, but uh, I don't know if I can zoom in. Probably not. This bed's in really good shape. I mean, it, it looks kind of rusty and discolored and everything. Oh, let me go on, hop on the other side. I'll give you a shot of that uh, solder repair. I know you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. Um, okay, I don't know if you can even see. Let me get the right. Yeah, so this this has all been, there's a scratch there. I think I filmed this before, I don't know how it came out on video. But I soldered that in and, and used a razor blade and, and basically scraped it down the lead uh, solder with a razor blade. And it's it's just filled in that scratch to prevent the chips from uh, ever getting in there. And I, if I'm in the shadow of the camera, you can kind of see where it begins and ends. But uh, I think that's an excellent repair. I'm actually very surprised I got the solder to stick and I got it hot enough for the solder to stick. But anyways, um, so aside from that, which I repaired, this bed is actually in fabulous condition. Uh, Colchester hardened these beds for the American market. And uh, yeah, this thing's in great shape. So, so that's that. Painting of the inside of the bed. Now the back. That's factory paint, and, I, and I've been cleaning off a little bit. So this is a machined area. I don't know if it's for the tail, um, it's not for the taper attachment. A hydraulic tracer went on the back, and uh, Keith Fenner has the same lathe, and he's got the hydraulic uh, tracer attachment. Oh, one more cool thing, just to note. This headstock, um, kind of is adjustable let me tell you so I don't know if it's lit that and that that's a screws um, two screws for shifting the headstock to the left and to the right so it's not actually touching on the male uh, male and female V there is some gap in there maybe 20 30 thousandths, but so you can adjust it, the head for aim in the front there, and also take your own back, and maybe the light is not good, you can adjust it there. So you can shift it um, side to side. And like I say, that's not exactly touching, there's a gap in there. So these lids are pretty cool. You can shift uh, and aim the headstock for alignment, and of course the mighty three inch uh, spindle bore, I think it's three and an eighth, um, yeah, that's cool. Alright, real quick, we're running out of memory. Uh, I don't know if I showed this. I got my blocks made um, for the felt, my roll of felt. Um, this is the other side block, and you can see I milled down, um, and it's got a, a front lip um, for the felt. And it just 
you know, bolts on and the felt gets uh, held in there. And I got the flip top oilers. I'm going to drill and tap in the top. But uh, yeah, made them out of aluminum. And uh, yeah, so, so yeah, the bedways are in pretty good shape on the underside of the, uh, the, uh, the carriage. But that's going to work really good. Steps down for the felt. So, so I'm happy with that. This thing's in really good shape also. Uh, I just wanted to give you uh, an overall uh, of how this was progressing. Until next time, this is 